those who worship. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to any visitors or guests who are with us today as well. And welcome to everyone joining us online. There are just a couple of announcements to highlight for you this morning. I invite you to turn to your announcements to insert. First, following worship today, at the same time as Sunday School, 945, we will have first communion instruction, and that will be for fifth and sixth graders. Our sixth graders uh, uh, class was delayed because of the pandemic and everything else involved with that. So we will have a, uh, a big class today and a grand celebration on Sunday, May 16th, as our fifth and sixth graders celebrate that first communion. And uh, there will be a celebration of life service taking place this Saturday, May 8th, and that's for Carol Bates. Carol passed away last year, and again, uh, her service was delayed because of the pandemic. So if, you're, if you'd like to join the Bates family in celebration of Carol's life, that takes place at 2 o'clock here at the church. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, I invite you to stand as you are able for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our gathering camp is now the Green Blade Rises.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Philip, 
Go to this chariot and drink. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, like a lamb silently for its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him that the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and the Lord snatched one, excuse me, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through this region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The psalm is Psalm chapter 22, verses 25 through 31, and will be read this month. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall be and be satisfied, that those who seek the Lord in praise may your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to the people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The second reading comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world that we may live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God has loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this way, or by this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. And we love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here in three.
Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At the end of my freshman year in high school, it was time for a rite of passage. My first real summer job. A family in my home church owned and operated a Christmas tree farm a few miles outside of town. One day after worship, they asked if I might be interested in working for them that summer. They told me their crew worked from 7 a.m. until noon, five days a week, from mid-June onward, until every tree on their many acres had been properly trimmed, as well as every tree on their son's Christmas tree farm, which was also many acres and maybe 10 miles apart. The job sounded like a great fit. I'd work each morning, and then have my afternoons free to swim and go biking and spend time with friends. So, when mid-June rolled around, I began working with about six other high school students, working my way from tree to tree down all of these neatly planted rows, shaping trees from three years of age to over 20 years old for a dime over minimum wage. And I loved it. Evergreens are fairly forgiving to work with. I don't know if you've ever trimmed one before. But because making a mistake while trimming from the previous year could often be corrected the next year. The pruned branches would create several new shoots, filling in gaps and helping the tree be nice and full and healthy and the proper shape that you would hope a Christmas tree would be. The most important part to trim was the top, especially the shoot at the very top of the tree that would continue to shape the trunk for the years to come. And this shoot was called the leader. And this is where each tree's trimming began. If you made a mistake leaving the leader too long or too short, the tree would be disproportionate forever. We had to hand measure the leader on each tree to ensure that we pruned it exactly right. And the rest of the tree was trimmed by sight, based off of the leader's height and proportion. Now, I never made this connection in high school, working my first real summer job, but Christian leadership is a lot like trimming Christmas trees, I think. We all lead in various ways and with the gifts that we've been given through the Holy Spirit. And as Jesus emphasized in this Gospel reading today, we all need pruning from time to time to remain healthy and full and in line with Christ our Lord, our leader. Christ is our source of life, our direction, and our guide. We're shaped by his lead. So what are the branches in your life that are reaching beyond his lead? And what are the branches in your life that need encouragement this day to grow more fully? Who are the people in your life, around you, who help to shape you in your faith in Christ? Pruning the things in your life that are not life-giving is not an easy task. So with Christ as our leader and taking a step back to see the branches that make us out of line with Christ, we can learn to prune ourselves and help others prune the things that make our lives disproportionate. So take a moment right now to think of someone who has helped you prune 
grow and flourish in your faith, someone who has had that type of influence. And take a moment to recognize the branches in your life that need pruning to have a healthy life and faith. Perhaps even say a prayer. I'm going to give you a moment right now to think of those people and those aspects of your lives.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the bounty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they may not lead by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love this day, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for all the needs of your church. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by your, the power of your Holy Spirit. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a gesture of God's peace with one another.
body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God, you may commune.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.